Hello my creative critters and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and today's video is episode 2 of my Anim Alphabet series. This is the series where I sit down and do some sketching in my sketchbook to fill a page of animals that start with a letter of the alphabet. And today it's all about animals that start with B. I also share a few cool facts about the animals that I draw in this video and I bet you didn't know at least some of them because I know I didn't. Also stick around for a bonus sketch of an animal hybrid that I create of two animals that start with the letter B. So let's get sketching. So for today's episode, I'm going to be sketching with my purple Bic Round Stick Grip Pen again. Any supplies I use in any of my videos have links in my description if you want to try them out for yourself. The first animal I'm drawing is a baboon. I found a really funny photo reference for this one of a baboon sticking out his tongue and that in combination with the crazy hair, I couldn't stop thinking about this famous Albert Einstein photo. It's so silly and I love it. Something about baboons that you may not know is is that a group of baboons is called a troop and it's usually led by a dominant male baboon. One troop can have anywhere from a dozen to hundreds of baboons in it. No wonder they're called troops because hundreds? That's an army if you ask me. Also for any information that I share in this video I do have links in my description to the sources that I got the information from so you can do your own research and learn even more about the animals that I talk about. Drawing monkeys, chimps, and any other primates is always so fascinating to me and studying the shapes of their faces especially I can't help but see similarities to humans along with the obvious differences. I think one of the reasons that a lot of primates are off-putting to me is because I see so much human in them but also not that much at the same time and that push and pull from humans to these animals is a little unsettling to me. Don't get me wrong, they can be cute too, especially smaller monkeys, but I don't know, is it just me who finds most primates? Dare I say ugly? Let me know if that's controversial, but it's just my opinion and I would love to hear your thoughts and what your favorite monkeys are. I kind of want to do a whole video just on primates because there's so many of them and some of them are kind of scary in my opinion. So let me know if you'd be interested in a monkey filled fun fact Friday video in the future. The next animal I'm sketching today that starts with B is a badger. Something you may not know about badgers is that their big boopable nose is 800 times sharper than humans. It's nothing compared to dogs though, which have anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 times more acute senses of smells than humans depending on the type of dog. Dog breeds that have shorter snouts, like bulldogs for example, have less space for that scent detecting cells than dogs with longer snouts. Check out the source I linked in my description to learn more about dog sense of smell. And honestly, I could do a whole separate video just on dogs' noses because there's a lot to learn about them. Such as they keep their noses wet to smell more efficiently because it helps capture the scent particles more easily versus if their nose was dry, which is something I didn't know. But back to badger's noses, and this may be because they have such a strong sense of smell, but I bet you didn't know that they keep their homes in tip-top shape by creating their own bathroom completely separate from their burrows. They actually won't defecate in their homes and instead make a pit of dried grass and leaves just outside of their burrow. It's like their own little outhouse. Badgers also use grass as bedding and they even change out their bedding daily and dispose of the old leaves outside and bring in new fresh bundles to sleep on. I wash my bed sheets often, but not daily. So props to the badgers for really keeping their home fresh. Not only do they keep their homes fresh daily, but some badgers homes are over 100 years old and are passed down to future generations. The underground burrows they live in are known as as sets and have up to 40 entrances and many meters of tunnels. It's nice that some badger families keep the same burrow for a long time because I'm sure it's a lot of work to create that from scratch. So little badger babies called cubs can thank their grandparents and even further for the cozy home that they live in. Badgers spend 70% of their time underground, so it's hard to see them out in the wild that often, especially since they're nocturnal and are only out at night. But during warm summer weather, they may come up from their set a short while before sunset. The next animal that starts with B that I want to talk about is the banded palm civet. The banded palm civet is a rare civet species found in the rainforests and tropical jungles of Southeast Asia. These guys sleep in holes in trees and other dark places during the day, and then at nighttime they are looking for food. The civets are primarily carnivores, but they will also eat plants and fruits too. Something really interesting and kind of gross that I learned about banded palm civets is that they sometimes eat coffee plants and there are few blends of coffee that use the beans picked out 
from the droppings of a civet. These beans are part of the rarest and most expensive cups of coffee you'll ever have. One cup of Kopi Luwak, which I think is a blend of coffee or a brand or something, I'm not really sure. But one cup of that sells for $42, and that's for one cup of it. The civets are used to choose the best berries, but wild civets droppings are obviously difficult to harvest. So you're probably wondering at this point, why the heck do people bother dissecting civets droppings? Because ew. <laughs> While the digestive juices of the civet changes the bean's chemical balance, so they lose the bitterness that coffee normally has and has a softer flavor instead. This effect that they have on coffee beans has led to the trapping of civets, which removes them from their natural habitats and relocating them to coffee plantations, which is so sad. These civets already have the main threat of deforestation in their native rainforest and tropical jungle habitats, but now people are taking them for their coffee plantations. Most civet plantations have anywhere from 40 to 150 or even more civets. I hate the taste and smell of coffee because it is so bitter and just gross to me and knowing that there's an option for a less bitter and softer coffee blends but that some of them are made from harvesting civet droppings it just makes me hate coffee even more <laughs> like first of all ew but then also ah because we're trapping civets for coffee beans like come on guys Natural predators in the wild for civets include crocodiles, large snakes, Bengal tigers, and leopards. In this sketch, I'm just focusing on their face because I just love the proportions of it and how its snout is so pointed and the shape of the nose at the tip of it. I also love the unique striping on its face. I do want to share what the rest of his body looks like though, so I'll pop an image here on the screen for you to see. And you can clearly see the bands on the body, and those are there to help camouflage to their surroundings at night to protect them from predators. Civets are closely related to the weasel and mongoose, and the palm banded civet is about the size of a domesticated cat, and they also have partially retractable claws to help them climb trees. You definitely don't want one of these guys as a pet though because they're very territorial and really solitary. Next up, I had to sketch a little bullfrog. I just love frogs in general and their derpy faces and don't get me wrong, I've had a frog jump out from nowhere in my yard onto me and I definitely freaked out. But I think if literally anything jumped up at me out of nowhere, I would freak out. So a message to all frogs, I love you, but don't spook on me or I might accidentally step on you. Thanks for listening. I just love frogs little legs and their stupid eyes and how their mouth always has that derpy expression. I don't know how else to explain it. Also their freaky long fingers and the way that their back legs bend into itself kind of. It is a little weird but it's also just funny to me. I guess I should share a fact or two about bullfrogs instead of just geeking out about how silly frogs are. So adult bullfrogs usually leap about three feet but they're also able to jump a distance of six feet with ease. So those little chicken wing back legs of theirs really do propel them if they need to. Also, can we talk about how a group of frogs is called an army? Can you imagine just a ton of frogs with their little army helmets and little army outfit with a little baby rifle or something? I know like nothing about what the military actually wears and uses, but again, I'm talking about frogs here, so let me be. Next up, let's talk about the bush baby. Okay, first of all, the name bush baby is so cute, but they're also called galagos, and they are one of the smallest primates at about the size of a squirrel. There are at least 20 species of galago known, though some experts believe that there are many yet to be discovered. Even though they're so tiny, about three to 10 ounces to be exact, and about five inches in length, not including their tail, they can easily cover about 30 feet in just seconds by using their tail to power their leap and propel them. I'm gonna say it again, they can get 30 feet away in seconds. So one leap from this tiny little dude is about seven feet, which is 12 times its body length. That's just crazy to me. Something else you may not know about bush babies is that they literally cry like human infants. It's maybe not exact, really weirdly similar. And listen for yourself. <laughs> I also linked a video of it in my description. Bush babies have huge round eyes that are great for night vision and bat-like delicate ears that enable them to track insect prey in the dark. And as they jump through thorn bushes and thick growth, they fold their ears flat up against their head to protect them too. You can also spot them folding their ears like that while they rest. 
I tried really hard to find a photo of their ears folded like how I just described, but the closest thing I could find was this adorable short video of a bush baby waking up and you can kind of see how it curls its ears in. I'll also have a link to the full original video in my description if you just want to see an adorable bush baby struggling to wake up because same. Next up, I'm sketching a bandicoot. First of all, bandicoot isn't referring to a specific animal, but it's actually a type of animal. Bandicoot is the name given to animals in the order Paramelomorphia, and there are around 20 types of bandicoot, and they're only found in the wild in and around Australia and New Guinea. So since they're nowhere near the US where I live, the first thing I think of when I hear Bandicoot is Crash Bandicoot the video game that I remember playing on I think my cousin's PlayStation as a kid. And I guess I see the resemblance with the pointed nose and all. It's almost like he was based on a real animal or something. The most well-known types of Bandicoot is the long nose Bandicoot, the short nose Bandicoot, and the Bilby that I will be talking about more later. The one I'm specifically sketching here is the Eastern Barred Bandicoot. These little guys weigh on average just a little more than a pound and a half or about 800 grams and about 16 inches or 40 centimeters in length from nose to the tip of their tail. Eastern Barred Bandicoots were originally broadly distributed across Western Victoria and Tasmania, but in Victoria, they are now restricted to the Hamilton area. They are doing a lot better in Tasmania, probably because there aren't as many foxes there, if any. Eastern Barred Bandicoots are are also nocturnal like badgers, but they live a very solitary life in grasslands that have dense bushes and low scrub that they use as shelter. Also something I didn't know is that for bandicoots it only takes 12 days for a baby bandicoot to be ready to be born. This is the shortest time for any mammal and after being born bandicoots spend about 8 to 10 weeks in their mother's pouch because bandicoots are marsupials and during this time they grow fur and their eyes open and at about 5 months bandicoots reach adulthood and they're ready to make babies of their own. Five months does seem pretty quick to be a full-grown adult, but I guess since bandicoots live about three years, just five months to reach adulthood kind of makes sense. The next animal I'm drawing is the bilby. This is another type of bandicoot, and these little guys prefer the hot and dry habitats of central and western Australia. They create these spiral burrows, which makes it a lot more difficult for predators to get in. The bilbies dig up a brand new burrow every couple weeks and use every single one of them, and their thick claws and forelimbs make digging burrows easy and help them do it very quickly. I'm just so fascinated with the rabbit-like ears and the tiny little points that their nose comes to. Also, an adult male can grow up to be about the size of a rabbit. Something I found interesting is that the word bilby comes from the aboriginal language, uwalare, which means long-nosed rats, and I think that perfectly describes this little dude. Next, I couldn't not draw a bat. One of the first animals that I think about when thinking of animals that start with the letter B is bats, and I love bats. They're so cute to me and they scream Halloween season, which I live for. So I couldn't not include a little bat in this video. Also, if any of you are Harry Potter fans like me, which I'm a Hufflepuff by the way, I took a quiz to find out my Patronus from Harry Potter and I specifically took it twice so that I can make a hybrid of the two to be my Patronus and I got a bat and then a mink, which are two animals that I already love so much. And I mean, my mascot on here is pretty much a ferret, which is kind of like a mink. And minks are so cute and they're very similar to ferrets. So yeah, if you want to see me cross bats and minks together to create an animal hybrid that is aka my Patronus, it's in one of my sketchbook tours and I'll have a link below and a card here for you to click if you're interested. So yeah, long story short, I love bats. I guess I'll share a few facts here about bats. And something I just learned is that they can live for more than 30 years and they can fly at speeds of 60 miles per hour or more. A personal favorite fact about bats to me is that they can eat up to 1200 mosquitoes in an hour. I can literally walk outside for a few minutes with my dog in my yard and come back in the house with at least three mosquito bites. So the fact that bats can eat that many mosquitoes in just an hour, I need more bats in my life. So as you can tell, I'm almost out of space on this page. So I had to choose wisely what animals to fill this last bit with and I couldn't not draw a beaver. I love, love, love beavers and they're just so cute and I just love them. One of my favorite animals 
animal hybrids that I've ever created is a bippo or a bippopotamus, which is a beaver hippo. And I've also done an illustration with just a regular beaver and a binturong because my favorite fact about beavers is that they excrete this goo called castorium and it smells just like French vanilla and was even used as flavoring at one point. I don't think it still is and if it is, it's probably not often. And according to at beaver baby furry love on TikTok, who is a beaver and other wildlife rehabilitator in real life? She said it's a very musky kind of smell and it's not super strong, but I think it still does have a little bit of a vanilla scent. Which by the way, you should all follow her on TikTok because I get my daily baby beaver content from her and I have learned a lot since following her about beavers and you will fall in love with beavers very fast too, I guarantee it. I mean, who doesn't like little baby beavers? Like I said, I did an illustration with a beaver and a binturong at a movie theater and binturongs smell like popcorn so I had the binturong eating popcorn and the beaver eating vanilla ice cream to kind of play off of those two interesting facts. Last on this page, I'm sketching a bison. Honestly, I was going to draw a buffalo but then I was like, what's the difference between a buffalo and a bison? Because I thought they were either really similar or the same but they are actually just common names for the shaggy bovine that roams Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Parks and neither word is incorrect. I think the confusion comes when we start talking about the North American bovines and tropical buffaloes that we find in Africa and Asia. The Cape Buffalo is found in Sub-Saharan Africa and the Water Buffalo of Asia comes in both domesticated species and their endangered wild ancestor. Both of these species have very large and curled horns, short coats because of their tropical climate, and a medium-sized hump. Both species of bisons have short horns, thick shaggy coats for more cold climates, and a huge hump that counterweights the low mounted heads. Also bison are more closely related to domesticated cattle genetically than the cape and water buffalo are. I did find a couple articles on the buffalo or bison debate and I think most of it comes down to them just being the common names, but I did link both the articles down in the description so you can read them and come up with your own conclusions, which I always encourage you to do. So now onto the bonus animal hybrid sketch that I did of two animals that start with B. For this episode, I chose to cross a binturong and a barn owl. So I give you the barn turong. I think this is basically just another cursed drawing that my brain came up with. And as the drawing progresses, you'll see why. I don't know why barn owls are so creepy to me, but in like a beautiful way? I don't really know how to explain it, but they just are. It's like weird, but majestic too. Anyway, my favorite fact about binturongs is their unique popcorn smell that I just talked about and that they have a prehensile tail that they use as another hand basically to help them climb trees. I also just love that they hang out on trees like this and nap. I just think it's so cute. He's just living his best life. I also love their noses too because they're just so boopable. I don't know how else to describe it. They're just so cute. A couple facts about barn owls that you may not know is that they make the most unsettling, screechy, hissy noises and I hate everything about it. I'll have to link the article that includes clips of what they sound like and you'll see what I mean if you check them out. Besides their god awful screeching, they are pretty silent when flying and don't have that swoosh sound due to their soft fringed edge feathers. Also, owls in general are known for their freaky neck movements and I thought the posing of the binturong on this branch worked really well with the turned owl face and honestly I could have made the face completely upside down and it would still make sense and be quote unquote correct. This is a made up animal hybrid from my brain though so correct is definitely in air quotes there. So that concludes this episode of my Anim Alphabet series. I hope you learned something new about these animals because I know I did. I mean I didn't even know some of these animals existed and I think that's why I can never get tired of learning about animals. These more fact-based animal videos do take a lot more time but I truly enjoy making them because I just love learning about animals if you can't tell. So I hope you can feel my excitement and get inspired to learn more about the animals with my videos because this is the whole reason that I started making YouTube videos to begin with. I love creating content that combines my passion for animals with my passion art and hopefully leave you inspired to create and learn more about the fascinating creatures all over the world. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please don't forget to leave this video a like and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video here every Friday and I would love to have you become a creative critter with me and follow along on my YouTube journey. If you made it this far, please leave me a comment and let me know any other animals you want to learn about that start with B because I obviously can't fit every animal in here that starts with B and I'm always open to doing multiple parts for the letters in this series. For example, I didn't talk about bears at all and bears are one of my favorite animals and I might do a whole video just about bears so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. 
Also, the next letter in this series is obviously C. So be sure to let me know any animals that you want me to talk about that start with the letter C, and I'll do my best to include them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay creative, and I'll see you in next Friday's video. And then at night, Elba, blah, blah, blah.